we'll start the game properly and when we're, when we're in. I think we when, are... When you, press, when you press live, are we going to start the game straight away? No, 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 no. Okay, we're, we're in live now. Hello and welcome everybody to the finals of the huddle. Hello. With me, I have my wonderful co-host, Evie. Hello, Kira Toto. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Oh. An absolute pleasure to have my co-caster here with me as we cast the very important finals game of the huddle. We have on the left side, uh, we haven't started the game yet, we're just paused. On the left side we have in green, um, and they've chosen Huns, the Hone Huddle. Huns, of course, a really good sim for deathmatch. You don't need to build houses, you can get your military out really, really, really fast. Um, and you want to introduce the other team, Evie? If she's still here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> on the right side we have the uh the, the huddle for jonk uh, and they've chosen goths which is another really good standard deathmatch uh uh pick mainly because they can create infantry so fast out of their early barracks but of course they got they don't have true mill crane they can't build those barracks very fast and they got to get them up as fast as possible so very two very fast orientated sieves in this deathmatch uh matchup it's a 1v1 but it, uh, yeah. Before we get going, Michael, do you want to tell the people what a deathmatch is? Yes, that was, yeah, that's a really good point. So deathmatch is when, you, if you look at the top, you can see each player starts with about 20,000 resources of food and wood, 10k gold and 5k stone. And So the, the action's going to start off really fast. We're going to see a lot of uh, buildings and units coming forward. And the idea here is you've got to survive that initial push and then kind of add some economy, hopefully, if, if, if you've survived that long and if the game goes any longer and make that transition. So it's a very fast, very action-oriented game mode. All right, I think we're ready. Are you yeah, ready? ready? Should we start it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Three, let's two, one, let's go. And right off the bat, we can see those stables coming up for the uh, Hun player. I think they're thinking heavy cavalry, to be honest. Mm, yeah, I mean, that was almost immediate. Yeah. You know? So they're, they go, they're jumping straight to the point. The beauty of the Hun's player, of course, is that they don't have houses. Ex um, so they don't need to waste their villagers uh, on building houses, unlike David Reeves' team. It says David Reeves, but yeah, it's his team. Yeah, it's got Jonk, right Jonk in the third Reeves. position for me. It's just a little bit confused, that's all. Yeah, um, Jonk, and the, you can see they've all immediately, they've got four villagers just piling on houses. Yeah, absolutely. I imagine they're going to try and hit that population cap as soon as they possibly can. Yeah, and both Hussar scouts. We some early aggression from our... Uh, from the Hone Huddle coming in. Absolutely. Lost villager three. Really beautiful use of these scouts going forward, getting two villager picks on the bottom. I don't know if they got a villager. Oh, they did get a villager pick on the top they before, before the, the Halbs came out. And those villagers aren't making barracks as we only see the first barracks on the southern side come up now. And it was almost denied as well. And the paladins are coming into the base. There's a lot of early aggression coming on this bottom side. More villagers going down. It's less villagers to make barracks. But the Goth infantry coming out of those barracks now. So we'll see if this defense can hold. Small contingent of paladins on the north side. You know, you can see when you look at the map, we've got a constant stream of um of hussars just coming in from Pones Huddle. Absolutely, and all of those stables really just producing. Well, they're not coming in. They're sending them over, and then they're just huddling. Oh, yeah, they're huddling. Go. Yeah, here they go, in a big clump. Meanwhile, at the bottom, a lot of paladins just dancing around those halberds. Trying, to, they they can't really engage these halberds. They have a lot of bonus damage against cavalry, and these halberds only cost no. food and wood, which of course is the most uh, resources you start with. Keep a close eye on the resources as well. I can see the Hone team already spent all of their gold on those queues and queues of paladins, uh, and you can see they're even adding light cab to the queue now. So they got to do their damage, and they got to do their damage quick. As we see in the north, more halberds just running, chasing. Chasing the paladins and having a good engagement on the top here. Paladins are going to clean that up. More paladins coming into the economy on the north. Yep. And a number of castles popping up as well for, for Hone Huddle. They've gone straight for the offensive. Not mucking around. At least three. One already up. Absolutely. And that's really good to see because that means that any kind of counter-attack coming in from the Goth player is going to be stopped in its tracks and at least until siege engines are coming out into the field. Things like trebuchets or rams. Not a lot of numbers of the uh, halberdier right now, and every now and again the uh, paladins getting a good a good uh, connection there and taking out the numbers, keeping the numbers of halberds low. But a couple of good engagements too. I'm looking in the north as the numbers, the stream of halberds is slowly starting to get the the, the edge against these paladins. 
Yeah, they are. They really are. Even though the paladins had the hill, and that if you're watching that little battle kind of in the south, um, now we've just got these these facades just kind of roaming around, and these these halberds are really you know giving them grief. They're really taking them out, and it's not particularly difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Plus 32 bonus damage on top of the six plus four regular damage for these uh, halberds because they're going against. Uh, Paladins, and I really like the switch. You see a lot of Cav Archer being added into the Han army, and this is exactly what they need to do to take out those Halberdiers. Um, and I'm expecting, with the Cav Archer coming forward, the Goth player might actually start using some of their gold and, and going into their unique unit, the Huskarl, which is basically an arrow yeah. sponge. So we'll see if they make that transition quick enough before the numbers of uh, Cavalry Archers get a little bit too overwhelmed. And I'm getting a lot of uh, frame frame issues on my ends. Might have no, you're all good now. Um, I've just actually just seen a very good question from Dave in our chat on the live um, in that uh, if you don't know that obviously what we're showing on the screen that both team can't actually see that so they see under what's called fog of war right so or is it fog of war yeah yeah fog, fog of war, war. yeah um, well, basically they only see what they've scouted out so they don't see the full map at the moment they probably only see each other's bases and they've not scouted anything further than that which exactly. might come into play later game if one team tries to make a little sneaky getaway um that's really when scouting is the most important thing absolutely and i'm just looking at the um fog of war for the green player now and you can see exactly right they've only really seen each other's bases and for some reason i'm getting really bad uh, frames on no on my uh, on the recording coming back. It's really slowing down, which is a bit bizarre. I don't know. I might pause it for a second and let my computer uh, catch up and then play it again. With a bit of luck, that might help. Not really. Oh dear. <laughs> um, not good at all. Um, meanwhile, the golf player really. Uh, Taking them, I feel like the defense has gone really, really well. There's still a lot of paladins around, but they're taking good fights of these halberds, and they're really uh, mopping up what's coming in effectively. But still a little bit on the overrun, and I don't see a lot of villagers working for the uh, mm. the huddle of Jonk. Uh, lots of supervisors. Yeah, first castle coming up on the Jonk uh, team at the bottom, uh, and that's going to be really important in defense, especially against those cave archers, which just run run away there. Is your um, recording going at full speed? Ah, I think I, think yeah. I just maybe fix mine a little bit there. Playing around with the, with the fast forward buttons maybe a little bit too much. Yeah, I think you're actually, you're probably like seconds behind me. I'm just looking at the score. Yeah, we're just hitting... not too far. Yeah, yeah. just hitting the eighth minute now for me. Yeah, yeah, you're really close. It's not that slow. Okay, cool. Just, just been a little bit weird, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, no more gold really left for the um, Hun player. They do have some villages on gold at their um, main town centres, which is really important. They're going to want to keep that Paladin production up, or at least the Cav Archer production up, and a large host of Hussars, which only cost food in the north, but not the unit you want to be taking the fight with against those uh, Halberders. No, I mean, those Halberders are just absolutely cleaning them up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, and they're good to get in the way um, because they're faster, right? So you can always outrun them, you can get a free hit every now and then, but it, at the end of the day, if you were to turn and face them, we all know how that's going to be. Exactly, yeah. And really trying to use their mobility against the goth player is probably what the Hun player should be focusing it on, but instead we see a very large engagement just against um, the Halberds at the top of the map here. Ooh. And cleaning them up, surprisingly. There is a lot of Hussar at the top, and now they're going to work their way towards the base. The main town centre of the uh, golf player is down in the north, and it's just yeah. a whole lot of barracks. Uh, not brave enough to make the cavalry charge yet, and probably rightfully so. There's a lot of halberds in the north, uh, north of the map there. I mean, it was a good hit to take those town centres down. Um, and it's probably, um, you know, uh, Jump Team should have had another town centre up. Absolutely, I'm looking at the economy right now and it's only 11 villages compared to the 60 villages of the Hun player. Although that's starting to go down as we've seen some raids in the lower left side. A couple of tribuches come out of that single castle from the goth player and they're going to be doing work against these castles here. Um, with no actual response that can be seen anywhere nearby for the uh, Hun players. All they've got down here is cavalry archers and they're not going to do a very good job of taking out those tribuches. 
No, absolutely not. Especially when we have, you know, all of these these Huskars just there to, you know, push them away. Absolutely. Just coming up on the 11th minute now, and I'm seeing some Hussars uh, going around the back edge near the waterline on the north side, not finding any villagers to kill, however, because there's not really any economy up here. Uh, they're going to be trying to maybe loop their way down to find the lower base of the Goth player. But meanwhile, the Goth swarm has really started. There's still plenty of resources in the Goth bank, and Huskals and Halberdiers are simply in the economy of the Hun player right now. Uh, Hone's huddle must be starting to get a little bit worried. Yeah, I mean, just the score shift alone is just so drastic how quickly it's happened. And that's all because they threw all of their money into those heavy, heavy cabs, you know? Absolutely, right. And no resources, and now now the enemy's in Hone's huddle. You know, they're in the base, they're going for that first TC. Abs hopefully, hopefully you can see that. <laughs> yes, 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 I can't, I can't. <laughs> Let's see some. I'm just at uh, minute 12, 20, if, if you can see okay, that. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're actually really close. <laughs> okay, that, that's good. That's good. It's just, it's just the recording. It's doing some weird speed issues, which is very bizarre. This doesn't usually happen. But we won't stop now. It's just everything's in a very light, slow motion, which is fun. Things look good in slow motion. Yeah, things do look Especially the trebuchet balls. I'm just looking at them going through the air, taking up these Hun oh. castles. And it's starting to look like the beginning of the end for the Hun player as they've lost their eco lead down to... It only looks about uh, 18 villagers compared to the 22 of the Goth player. Uh, the Goth player really not focusing eco this game and, and maybe having more military as a result. Hussar on the bottom side just taking out uh, a pair of trebuchets who are maybe a little bit too forward but the Goth infantry with plus three attack versus buildings going to be enough to take out that castle in the south. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing really well. Mm -hmm. And you can see how good some of these castles are defending a lot of dead hus uh, halberdiers in the northern base. Um, really taking them out, but ultimately not going to be enough. Uh, those halberdiers are very cheap, and I think the golf player can keep making a whole lot of them. It's still a thousand wood and a thousand food in the bank. Meanwhile, looking at the Hun player, only really wood and maybe one more castle left in their resource pool, and they haven't really gotten their economy up and running to a scale that they need for this stage of the no. game. Yeah, no. Um, we just had a little doubt, doubt castle. Did you see that on the top, top of the map? Oh yes, I can see a single villager. We've got one castle going up. We had another castle. So we had another castle next to that going up. Absolutely, yeah. I can see. And this is where the oh, markets, so. the markets happening as well, right? And this market's really important for the. Uh, for Hone's huddle because they they have that extra stone and wood. They need to sell it and try balance and get any kind of. Uh, manageable force on the field because the army count is really low at the moment only 35 yeah, yeah. and as soon as that market goes up they've got no resources to do anything with it they've got wood get rid of that wood yeah they def desperately need to sell that wood and now that the market's up i think we'll see that and there's that doubt castle i think i'm just a moment behind you just hitting the 16th minute 40 seconds now um oh, yeah. meanwhile we can see the rest of the base for the hun player getting mopped up by this large army of goth infantry, goth heavy infantry. There's no real counter to this, as we see some uh, cav archers trying to get a sneaky pick on a trebuchet in the middle. Um, small group of cav archers, probably being controlled by Sex Panther, if the Royal Rumble was anything to go by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Well, the Huns have re retaliated just as you'd expect them to, right? You know, they've got troops there, being in the way and getting in the way. Maybe not enough, maybe they need more, but it's slowing them down. Um, they should move that treb though. They should move that treb, yeah, but it does get taken out. There? There's no point at being there. Yeah. I can see them taking up, taking up the last, can, uh, the last castle. The last castle made by the uh, Hun player in the north. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, there's that other castle which never got up, so that one doesn't really count. Uh, yeah. th three trebuchets are going up on the castle now, and I think it's about the stage of the game where uh, we can almost call it for the golf player. Only some cav archers running around the map trying to get the old villager or um, halberdier kill, and no real uh, presence on the map. A couple of town centers trying to go up, trying to boom back into the game, but I really don't see yeah. this ending very well. Yeah. But you know what? With the military they do have, they're being annoying, which is the whole point, right? You know? If exactly. If you're down and you need the extra time, you need to get those military units on you. Be annoying. Just run through their base. 
exactly and, and that's exactly and what's happening yeah i can see i don't know how many hundreds of units just following a couple of hussar they're desperately trying to take out a couple of uh uh trebuchets in the center there just running away just before the rest of the army hits them trying to buy yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to buy someone time trying to allow these villagers enough time to get enough town centers up maybe try boom back into the game which is very bold very bold very cheeky um it is very cheap. Very low likelihood yeah, of working. Most people at this point would be, you know, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. I mean, it is the finals after all. We have the. Uh, is, yeah. Everything is on the line for this single game. And they pushed so strong at the beginning. I, honestly, in that first part when they just had all these SSRs coming at them, I really thought, you know, this is going to be overwhelming. But you have to give credit to this this Huns team. Exactly. Yeah. They. Huns team? Team. Huns team. Yeah, the Huns team. Yeah, they really had looked like they had a strategy there, right? They're really like a well oiled machine. So many paladins streaming across the map, um, very fast, and of course that's what the Huns are known for. Known for in death matches, the extremely fast opening, and um, almost didn't get the barracks up for the Goth player, especially on the southern yeah, side. But the Goth player, they responded beautifully. Exactly. Well done, great county unit. Yeah. Kept cool under pressure. Yes, they lost some villagers, but it doesn't matter when you have a unit that can take this. Yeah. Um, and make it costly, you know, make it hurt for the other team. Exactly, and I think that's exactly what it came down to, is that trade of, basically, you have a lot of food and wood, so make a, a unit which counters the enemy unit, but also costs what you have a lot of, um, which is really what we saw from the golf player there. Um, what was I thought was also maybe a game-winning move is the switch to add in the Huskulls, but only when they saw enemy cab archer they didn't yeah, they didn't do it that. too early right yeah. they really waited yeah. until there was archers on the field and then they switched to huskars for viewers who don't know these huskars you can see them here big shield and they have eight plus two pierce armor which means they can just take so many arrows before going down there he goes and the i'm just watching one die on a beach <laughs> <laughs> what a nice place to die yeah <laughs> Um, but really, I think we're just waiting for a bit of a GG here as the two, the small group of Cav Archers and the small group of Hussars are just running around, still being annoying, just trying to keep the uh, the golf player as busy as possible. And I'm surprised they haven't called the GG. That being said, mm -hmm. trying to put down more town centres on the left side of the map. Well, you see two town centres already. We've got one in the north of the map um, with a couple of villages up there. And then we have one on this kind of western lake. Yeah. You know? They're making use of the fish that are there, which is great. It's a great way to use it. You've got the population for it, so get some fishing boats out there. Start making a comeback. They've obviously not scouted this side of the yeah. map. I think get I... your market up, get your town centers up, and try and do something with it. Yeah. Which is exactly why whoever is controlling these these cab archers here is just doing a fantastic job. They They're really are. Us. <laughs> 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 doing such a good job they even took out a fishing ship i just saw they even took out a fishing ship which is the only real source of food income for the uh on yeah. at the stage of the game i think i might be a tad ahead of you i just saw um trebuchets taking out the northern town center on the far right and a minute 25 actually um but you're right you just a, a smidge ahead of me a smidge ahead of you yeah <laughs> this, this recording isn't so smooth as we had hoped it might have might have been better <laughs> I've gone forward a bit. I think we're good now. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. But, uh, but, yeah, those trips have done their work. Yeah, they've totally done their work. Um, that being said, still haven't scouted those uh, sneaky town centers on the left-hand side. And whilst it is a bit of a fool's hope to boom, boom back into this game, if anyone can do it, maybe Hone can do it. Because um, as we know, he is a very powerful player and very strong at booming. So maybe he has if... has a reputation in Michael Michael um, campaigns. He, he really does for winning them all. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely is undefeated. Undefeated, absolutely. Uh, as these cab archers still just being so annoying. Hit and run, hit and run. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know a little bit of real history, this is why cab archers dominated uh, most of uh, medieval medieval times. And one of the reasons why the Mongol horde basically crushed and conquered all of well, Eastern, Central and Western Asia. <laughs> uh, one of the largest empires of history. It's mainly just because of this. They just hit and run, hit and run, hit and run. And anyone of armor couldn't keep up but i feel like eventually it's going to catch up with them um yeah eventually the rhythm <laughs> is going to get you yeah and you will fall <laughs> yeah as we don't see the boom is happening there's actually now more villages for hone's huddle than there are for jonk's huddle and um, the villages are working you know we've got some really nicely placed town centers we've yep. got one kind of in the south of the map 
all kind of around the lake, which is great because there's this great food resource here. Absolutely, and I can and see a dock going down on the south. Lake. Yeah, there's a nice dock going down, and then also, right, you've got all these trees around, so that's the wood you need to get your docks up and get your boats out. Yeah, and doubles as a convenient wall against the uh, mostly melee enemies of the uh, of the other goths at the moment. That being said, the goths have 119 military on the field right yeah. now, um, and it is really a matter really of staying good, hidden. Really? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they're yeah, chasing they're those six it. cab archers. <laughs> they're taking a break. <laughs> they're taking a break. So they're, they're having a rest. Take it, take it a little rest. <laughs> the other half are just getting real frustrated. Yeah. These, these, these cab archers. <laughs> yeah. Screams of them. <laughs> I like that. I forget them. Just a big horde of gimlings. You know, like I'm wasted yeah. on long distance. Us dwarves are natural <laughs> sprinters. Just desperately <laughs> trying to find these cab archers. <laughs> <laughs> another town center going up on the bottom left side i mean they actually have t four times the number of town centers uh compared to the goth player at this stage and i don't think the goths are even building villages out of one of them so uh it's technically one town center versus four at this stage but that being said there's no military you know they're under no threat yeah you know if, remember this is four on four right so what we're potentially have four people controlling four different parts of this army exactly very good point Chilling out, just waiting for Team Hot A to just, just throw in the towel. Exactly. But, you know, we know, they obviously don't know, but yeah. they got plans on that, that western side. Yeah, and I can see now the blue small group of, or a, a, quite a large group of Huskars and, uh, and halberdiers and they've just come over to the left they're searching they obviously started getting sick of uh, chasing the cab archers round and round in circles and they've found the reboom and i think now they realize oh this is why they haven't resigned yet yeah. they're desperately well, trying to stay in the game point, right? yeah after a certain point right you have to think that it can't just be these 10 cab archers running around yeah you it, have to have something else going on and like i said it's a four player game you need two people max controlling those cab archers maybe even one yeah uh, if they're skilled enough to do it so what are the other three doing they're booming that's what they're trying to do exactly. um, and obviously they finally realize this hopefully not too late i don't think too late because they just don't have the military on Kone's huddle to deal with this absolutely yeah down to eight military against still 117 they just can't really take out uh it's just a matter of hide and mouse um sorry hide and seek mouse mouse hide and seek i don't know what it's really called hide and mouse seek hide and mouse chat <laughs> it was me i had the cheese on a log uh, <laughs> yeah um and it, yeah it's just a matter of time at the stage i don't see they're gonna be able to reboom a really good effort on the top lake actually there's 12 fishing ships there and that's actually a lot of food economy but that dock will go down and that will make those fishing ships idle you don't even need to kill the fishing ships there uh, town center does go up in the center for uh jonk's team those hussars probably controlled by six panther still being annoying but not quite denying that town center and um i think all locations have been scouted now by yeah, which is the jonk team. i mean maybe uh, honestly this game could have been shorter if they just made a couple of you know scouts got them out there yeah even just auto scouting at this point you would have picked them up absolutely you would have seen yeah. something there's four of you right you've got two on army trying to wander around send a few scouts out you've obviously you've got the economy you've got the numbers you know i mean it wouldn't have it wouldn't have changed the result but it would have maybe got us there a bit quicker yeah maybe got us there a bit quicker as you say that there are a couple of hussars down the bottom uh finally taking out those pesky uh cab archers i think the uh players yeah. realize that they need a little bit of speed to uh get that yeah. going yeah. and um Meanwhile, sneaky villagers try to escape, migrate across the entire map, going north, getting intercepted by uh, a bunch of armies. They've been spotted. Yeah. They've been spotted. <laughs> they were very spotted. They killed a bit, little bit there. And Take one down. Let's go get the rest of them. Don't let those ones up the top go. Yeah. Let the ones up the top go. <laughs> Two more, <laughs> just trying to go up to the top of the map, trying to build that same town centre that was taken out early in the game. It's definitely just a mad rush for hope. Maybe they're just... I don't know, in disbelief, in shock at how quickly that, that, that what felt like winning turned back on them, right? The, um, the paladins were doing so much work. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for a second there, it really did. I really did think this was going to be the quickest game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like at the semi-finals round one when uh, Hone just yeah. went full scouts and, and took out uh, Fluffy Dudette and Six Panther in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. But no, we saw. Uh, it was almost, it was almost re reminiscent of that that tactic. Exactly right. Yeah, it's yeah. very much Hone's specialty. A lot of villagers getting cleaned up in the south. 
still try to make that TC at the north, but I feel like this game is practically over. Absolutely. And a mere 36 game minutes, uh, where a large proportion of that I think might have just been spent chasing cab archers around the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And there we go, the GG is called. And I have to say congratulations to Jonk and his huddle for performing an excellent defence against what looked like an unstoppable amount of paladins and so fast, yeah. so fast it's at the start of that game. A great, fantastic defence, fantastic turnaround. You know, I bet they were just absolutely panicked at the start. Absolutely. You know, they barely got anything out. And remember, they had to worry about houses. Whereas Hone's huddle, they didn't have to worry about houses. Absolutely. You can, you know, so you can get their pop count up and then all of a sudden you got bloody paladins in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just looking at the, uh, the statistics now and there's, there's this big graph and you can see the, um, the big graph of, uh, of green and you can see the dark green here, which is the military. This military is just paladins. So it's actually outnumbering the number of halberdiers. The halberdiers are meant to be cheap and cheerful. Uh, I think 1v1, a paladin actually wins against a halberdier. It's only in numbers when you actually start seeing that cost come back and you can see that slowly happen throughout the game as the gold runs out. And that cost really, the cost is the thing that, that lost them this game. Absolutely, yeah. They, they didn't have uh, a backup unit to kind of switch to. They had Hazar, but that got pretty hard counted by the halberdiers. Looking at the kill losses, um, they actually killed much more than they lost. 680 kills for the Hun player, uh, losing 492 units. So a lot of that would have been villagers. So very good KD, positive KD for the Hun player, but not enough. Not enough damage. Excellent counter by the jocks, the cheap and cheerful infantry. What a game. Do you know what? I'm disappointed. And I'll tell you why. It's because I wanted to see some betrayal, you know? I wanted someone to just really just muck up someone's game. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. such cooperative teamwork, and while I love that, I hate it. Yeah, I have to say, I'm surprised that no one felt a little bit, uh, you know, antsy because they got taken out in the early stages and had to join the winner and then decided to, you know, maybe build a couple of pesky walls in their own base or that kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sabotage an army or two, you know, build the wrong units. That would have been quite funny to see. But you're right, very uh, keeping it competitive, I think, and everyone actually working together really, really well. Um, I mean, in saying that, like, yes, there was a clear winner, but the teams worked well together. You know, it just, unfortunately, one team just was ready for the pressure, I think, and the other team wasn't as ready for that pressure. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. especially all of your eggs in one gothic basket. Yeah, or <laughs> well, hunnic basket. Hunnic basket, <laughs> yeah, the hun basket. Yeah, and then... All, the hun all, basket is the problem. All there's holes in the hun basket. <laughs> there's holes in the hun basket. And all those eggs, eggs hatched and just nothing happened. <laughs> I'm looking at the uh, effective APM or actions per minute for both teams. They're very even, uh, so pretty evenly matched. Um, and might be interesting in the future, maybe to see some more standard games between these two teams, because it might make for some interesting viewing. So we'll see what happens there. But for now, for Michael Michaels, the huddle, we have our huddle winner as Jonk, who has started off by eating Quark Quabble, and then he kind of assimilated, uh, he's called Helicopter in this game, but Science is for Dweebs and uh, David Reed 002, and then finally gobbling up with his huge gothic swarm. I might think maybe Goths is uh, Jonk's favourite favorite sieve. He has used it a lot this tournament. Did um, he play the, Goths the whole time? He played he play Goths in the first game. He definitely played Goths in the first game. I'm not sure if he played it in no. the second game or not. I think he played um, Huns in the second game. I can't yeah, remember. I think you're right, yeah. Yeah, so very familiar with Goths and Huns, obviously. Uh, some of the original sieves in Age of Empires, and obviously very comfortable with them, and, and it's showing off now as he, you know, perfectly counters Huns in this ma matchup. Yeah. What a back and forth game, really, when you think about it. For a second there, I did think I did think the uh, Huns were just going to sweep. <laughs> it was a bit back and forth, and then you know, Hannes Huddle, they weren't going to take it lying down, and you know what? You gotta love a girl for trying. Yeah, I, you gotta respect them, thinking, you know what? We might be able to cheekily get back into this one. They're just chasing yeah. those cat Why just... wouldn't you, right? I, especially what we've seen from maybe other players in that particular in in Jonk's huddle that they weren't scouting particularly well anyway. You know, so it stood for reason. If you tuck them in those little nooks, those little crannies, that you might have gotten away with it. But I think the amount of military they had at the end of the day, you were just gonna get caught. Before yeah, you could do anything. With it. Exactly. If maybe they had maybe switched to Cav Archer a little sooner, um, that would have maybe, they would have traded a little bit better against especially the uh, hal Halberds, but um, you force your Goth player to make Haskals, which also costs gold, and then you start, you know, destroying your resources at a more equal rate. 
Um, and you know what? Like that's the thing, people. You know, Age of Empires is about your resources, and it's about your villages and about getting those resources. And today was a perfect example of what happens if you run out of your resources. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe not a big enough focus on economy uh, by the home play there, there as well. Um, but I think I, they really they put all of their eggs in one basket. Yeah. And you got to be able to adapt uh, as well. Yeah. Um, they definitely went into this having a plan in mind. Did at the end, right? You know. Yeah, um, true. We come to the point where it's too little, too late. Yeah, I would have liked. Well caught, nonetheless. Um, for all good competitors, all well done. Absolutely, and a very entertaining game. Uh, that being yeah. said, very quick uh, and and back and forth and and yeah, it was really like trading exactly. of blows. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have to say thank you, uh, Evie, for being the co-host in the uh, latter half of this tournament. It's been absolutely fantastic to have you here, and I think all the viewers will agree, and we hope to see you more in the future. <laughs> oh, thank you. Not as a competitor. I don't think competing is a good thing, but I like to make the co-hosting thing something more permanent. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, too. And I all of my credentials would be, like, likes AOE needed to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's okay. I, I, that's what I say as well, because I can't play AOE either. I just don't. Uh, <laughs> this is why I cast. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, that's not fair, because you've destroyed <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, but no, yeah. I hope everyone enjoyed the huddle and you caught into this live stream. I'm sorry about the false start. This is the proper one here. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the outcome here. Very interesting game at the end. Thanks again for Evie. Thanks again to all of the wonderful contestants who took the time out of their lockdown level four to make it here and give us this fine, fine entertainment. I've been your host, Michael Michael. And I thought Evie was going to say, and I've been Evie Evie or something. I've been, I've, and I've been your co-host, Evie Evie. Hey, there we go. Um, Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. And share it with your mum. Um, but other than that, cut wood, build farms, and have a lovely evening.